My name is Terry Salyer. Uh, are you first? Yeah, we're going in. You ready to do it? Okay, all right. But um, I'm energy manager in eastern Kentucky, and probably some of that you don't know what that is, and we're going to explain a little bit about that. Uh, I've got five different districts. Uh, I work basically out of Johnson County School District, but I also have McGoffin, I have Lawrence, I have Paintsville Independent, and I also have Martin County School District. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background, but first of all, have you passed out all the stuff? I want to introduce my wonderful colleagues here, Justin Arms and uh, Mark Shepard here. They are Hall of Fame honorees in Eastern Kentucky with the Touchstone Hall of Fame Energy Bunch. So uh, they're going to talk a little bit later on of where we're going with this project that we create. Uh, this is the Juice Crew Energy. In this tiller's room, we'll get into that in a little bit. But first of all, I'm an interaction kind of guy. you got to understand that. Particularly with students and staff and administrators, you've got to be able to do that. The focus of attention deficit when I came to this job back in 2010 was to be able to involve people in cultural and behavioral change in our school districts because that is the biggest impact that we can do initially in any energy management type program. So that's what we did. So what we did is got and, and developed what we call a juice crew, which we'll go into here a little bit uh, later on. <coughs> I want to know, should I keep going? What is your school district's annual budget? And I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I just want to have an idea of what we're talking about. Here we go. Okay. School district, if you look at that, you want if you operate your district. <laughs> Anybody. I said this is interactive, you you gotta talk to me. Okay, some of you probably don't know. That's why I'm here today. Okay? Just to give you an example, $29 million Okay? Just kind of talk to you. you another question I want you to respond to. Drive and Google Docs. Item in your budget for your district. Would you say? Classes. So, really, the first day was kind of like what? Personnel. How much do you think personnel would be? It would be over 80%. It's you all that's right here, you know, staff and all that kind of stuff. What would you say is the second largest in the line item budget? How much do you think, what kind of percentage of that would that be? If you all are 80, you only got 20 left. So what would you say? Anybody else got a guess? 15. Anybody else? The average for energy consumption, and that considers electricity, natural gas, water, trash removal, all that, is anywhere from 6 to 8 percent. Yes. Yeah. The I represent almost 10,000 students in my five years. I represent here in the nine buildings in all those five districts. I represent a lot of money, a lot of taxpayers' money. The biggest thing that I want you all to glean out of today, what our approach is, is to protect you all. Thank you to save your job. And through, and through, they're just comfortable to talk a little bit about it. And it's the last five years, and so it's fairly new down. Yeah. Now what is that? Average teacher salary is 51000 So how many jobs have been saved in the last five years? The reason this is so important, and a lot of people do not know this, folks, that's why we're here today. We're the second, we're only two energy projects and energy management in this whole grant program. But it's essential to our future if we become administrators of our building. You know, curriculum and all that is very important. But the point is, if we can't have you all as educators to be able to deliver that curriculum because we don't have the money, then we'll, we're letting down our students, which is the number one factor. So energy is very important. Give you an idea. How much and what would you say is the number one energy hall in your school? Anybody? 
HVAC is important. 80% of your electric bill is lighting. Okay? Now, let me ask you another question. How much do you think we lose or we waste in lighting? If it's 80% of our total cost, okay, and our lighting out of all the electricity with the HVAC and everything, of the whole bill of electricity, but we waste 33%. You know why? Classrooms unoccupied with the lights on. Every classroom that's unoccupied for two hours a year in your district cost them 50 bucks. They had a survey in the state of Texas about 14 years ago. And they found out, they just went around and did a survey with lights on, lights off, and all this kind of deal. They break at lunchtime so these folks can go see other things going on in the building. Say $14 million. <laughs> the lights on. That's where that four to five million dollars has come from. It's amazing, isn't it not? A lot of money, a lot of things that we're looking over. <clears throat> One of the things I want you to look at is, and I don't have these handouts to give to you, but this is the law that we have to do this. Back in 2008, on April 24th, House Bill 2, Section 16 was signed into law, which requires now that the school districts must report all their energy consumption, their usage, and their costs, and all that kind of stuff to the Kentucky legislature. So that's why crazy people like me come involved and all that kind of thing. So we've been doing this for five years now. But it's something that we must do, and it's something that we must create. So we create a mission statement, districts and things, and the energy teams are being established to assist with integration of energy management within our school districts. The energy team is representative of various operational areas that significantly impact energy use. The energy team will, will recommend policies and procedures that will affect the energy use in all district students and staff. In addition, the team will assist with measuring and tracking energy performance in with students, administrators, and stakeholders. We created energy teams in the five school districts that I have. I said earlier what we've said. One of the things that we wanted to do is a highlight for the year, to really show the emphasis, to talk about how much money we saved, to talk about how many jobs we've saved and things. So we created the G2 Energy Fair. And what we did there is very similar initially about a science fair type approach where students all across Which guys? Johnson County in particular, in our district, the year this way, a science fair type thing at our high school. Thanks. And the first year we did it, we probably had over 150 students involved. And so these lovely men right here came up to me and said, hey, Let's take it one step further because not every kid is energy or science specific or whatever or core STEM projects. So they said, uh, we have some that are very uh, good at performing arts, visual arts. They can write a great essay and things of that nature. So that's where these two wonderful men have come along in my life, where we've taken a small little project in Eastern Kentucky with about 150 students to blossom it hopefully to over 1,000 this year. Last year we had over 400 because of doing more categories and things like that. So what I want to do is let these guys kind of take over and, and basically tell you where we started initially, where our emphasis was, changing behavior and culture in our schools, which is resorting and keeping our jobs. But these guys right here are taking it to the next level. Uh, the genesis of our energy last year, like you said, the science fair project. But what we saw in the first few years was we were getting some great results, but we, we had a few uh, barriers to STEM, and that's uh, the science, technology, engineering, mathematics. There's a lot of different barriers that uh, people in Eastern Kentucky face. And so what we want to do uh, this year and where uh, we're putting our grant money is in the diversification of the energy fair, the STEM project. And like you said, we went, we've uh, established performing arts, uh, visual arts, uh, we've got an essay contest, and what we're trying to do is break down some of those socioeconomic barriers that we deal with. Uh, one of the barriers that we're going to try and break down is how 
people in our area don't have uh, good engineering role models. There's not a lot of the industry. So we have outside sources come in, they'll do our judging. We have uh, companies come in, they sponsor us. But also the other thing is uh, the female representation in STEM projects. If you know anything about STEM, that is an issue that is statewide, worldwide. And what we're doing with some of these different categories is taking that student that may have that interest but finding a way for everyone to be able to express their uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics background. And what we have done this year is created a much more encompassing uh, K through 12 approach to what we're going to have on uh, display at the Energy Fair, the pamphlet that I've been out to you. So, we had some really good success last year and the last few years with our students been very active and participating really well. But what we're trying to do is get more people involved to introduce those topics to our, our students within our district and the uh, surrounding districts. And what we want to do is be able to give everybody an opportunity to compete, to uh, express themselves in their way that they, that they find. And some of the visual arts uh, items we've looked at, we put a, some pictures on our poster that's hanging down in uh, the lobby down there and we've already got some of the entries in and some of them are just very uh, interesting very stunning so we, we've, we're hoping to find a way to get a lot of people involved and like I said uh, 400 is a good number but we're, we're shooting for a thousand county wide I mean we, we want our numbers to be way up and that's what we're really trying to evaluate uh, this year with our energy fair um, and like uh, we've all discussed already uh, this couldn't be made possible without Terry, his, his brainchild, his idea, uh, but as well as our sponsors and truthfully all the school administrators within our district. Uh, what they're doing before we actually have the large showcase at the high school is that each individual elementary school, uh, middle school, they're actually doing their own uh, competitions in various categories and from there those winners will come over and just have one big huge deal day. Uh, it's pretty sweet, kids like you on the old uh, yellow bus and come over there and hang out at the high school with the older students. Uh, throughout the day, but it, gives that, but it does give them an opportunity, regardless if they, if they make it to the high school showcase or not, for each individual student's um, project, essay, visual art, whatever it may be, be showcased. And typically, they try to coincide that uh, with, say, an open house. I know that's what happened in Highlands. A uh, huge turnout, so I mean, not only are the, are the uh, students taking pride in their own uh, individual work, but it also allows uh, their parents to see that, take pride in that as well. And that's something, truthfully, um, being in the rural eastern Kentucky that we really don't see a lot of. I think at one point, maybe 70% of our, of our student population uh, was either one family home or one parent home or even with the grandparents at one time. So it's just a great, great event for all people and all parties involved. Any of y'all have any questions? <coughs> Comments? Emotional outbursts? <laughs> Thank you all very much.